Buhai. Kamustika, welcome. How are you? This is Bob from Love Beyond the Sea. Today, I'm going to start making a series of videos called Cringeworthy Things Said to Single Christian Men. Women have heard it too. Cringeworthy Things that you go and you ask for someone for some advice or you want a listening ear, you want somebody to be empathetic and um, you often hear some similar comments and, and you may not know exactly how to respond but you probably aren't very happy to um, hear those comments from people who are largely well-meaning but I want to talk about these comments uh, so you can you know, maybe see the truth in it and see the error in it and um, and know how to um, respond I guess in in your own mind uh, about these comments um, when people say these things they're they're not meant to make somebody feel bad and some of these comments are going to be more harmful than others so please bear with me as we go through a series I'm not gonna try to cram it all in in one or two or three videos probably just whatever it takes and um, try to keep it around 10, 12 minutes long and go over cringeworthy things said to single Christian men. And I've heard many of them. By the way, uh, if you don't know, I was single until I was 53. That's a long time. I don't want you to be single at 53. Everybody's path is different. And I finally did get married. I'm extremely happy with being married, but I would not have gotten married if I had given up, if I had sulked, if I had been hurt by the things people said, if I gave up, you know, threw in the towel, I didn't, you know. I used these verses to help fuel me to keep looking. I just had to do something uh, far out of my comfort zone. Uh, GWYW acronym stands for Go Where You're Wanted. It's just something to think about as, uh, as you watch my videos. And please subscribe to Love Beyond the Sea. I found my wife uh, beyond the sea. I want to help people find their wife anywhere they can, locally or domestically. What I want you to get out of this series is I've heard these things before. I didn't give up. I'm still married. I intend to be married to my dying day. And, um, and uh, I, I think very highly of marriage, so I'm not somebody that got married and just focusing on myself or my wife. I still care about people that are single, people that are hurting, people that are hearing cringeworthy things. And um, I don't have the answer. I wish I could wave a magic wand and solve everybody's single troubles, but I can't. Um, now, lvbts.com, you can go there, see my website. Mr. E artfully uh, designed this website. There is a single, not a single forum, message forum, uh, community corner, uh, relationship lounge, lifestyle lounge. It's, it's a news, so we're trying to get people to go there. Uh, but my channel is about um, experiencing and or finding first and experiencing marital love uh, wherever you can. So let's talk about this. I hope that's enough background. Um, check out the, the videos, leave comments here or the uh, community corner. One thing I'll start out with here is, uh, you know, you'll hear women hear this a lot, but it's possible uh, it would be said to, to men too. And that is God is your husband. God is your husband. Now when you think about it, we are the bride of Christ and that includes men and women. So somebody could be saying this and saying, look, don't put all your emphasis on uh, finding somebody in this life. You already are married. You're married to Christ. We'll talk about these things. But I'll, I'll get this one out of the way because I, I know women hear it a lot. And like I said, as you know, you're part of the bride of Christ, somebody could even say this to a man. But they say God is your husband. Why would they say that? Where would, does this come from? It comes actually from the Bible in the Old Testament, Isaiah 54. 5 through 8, it says, For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, and the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. The God of the whole earth is called, for the Lord has called you like a wife deserted and grieved in spirit, like a wife of youth when she is cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I deserted you, but with great compassion I will gather you. In overflowing anger for a moment I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. 
So um, that is um, from the Bible. And if you isolate that, then a person can be told, especially a woman, look, God is your husband. You've, you've got the very best husband in the world. Why are you still trying to marry some earthly husband who has faults? I mean, again, if in isolation, you know, verses can, can actually be, be harmful. Now, the first thing I think about when I hear this one, and God is your husband, it takes me back to 1 Corinthians 7, 2 in the New Testament. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. And it's talking about a um, woman finding a man to marry, a man finding a woman to marry. Why? To avoid fornication. And we'll get into this uh, later when we talk about the gift of singleness. But um, one of the reasons given to marry, and it's a big one, is to avoid fornication, which is sexual sin. Something is actually not to be named uh, once among you as, uh, you know, professing Christians. And by the way, I am a Christian. And so my authority to talk about these things is the Word of God. And um, I've learned from, from many people. I've learned from, from my pastors. Fortunately, I had one that would not let me give up and sulk in being single and that's what kind of I want to do for people out there if they care, if they care to let me try to motivate you to keep looking. So um, a life of sexual frustration is no life at all because you, you really cannot concentrate. You can make your life worse. You can make another person's life worse. And uh, the point here is when, when somebody says, you know, God is your husband, um, you know, don't don't give up because First Corinthians seven two says if you're a woman, you know, let every woman have her own husband because for most people that is the norm. Now, a related comment. That's one comment, but my second comment here is singleness is best. Maybe you've never heard this. Maybe it's only been implied to you, but singleness is best. I even had a singles pastor tell me this i still remember like yesterday you know, it was 10 years ago maybe maybe more sitting in his office office uh talking about you know like i did usually how do you find a wife how do you keep going how do you maintain hope what do you do with your uh, unmet sexual desires and um one statement that a person can say um, with apparent biblical backing is this one. Singleness is best. And to get to that point, they may uh, quote or show you in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 7. Let's start in verse 7. For I would, this is the Apostle Paul, who is speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So he is speaking um, as God. It's divine truth. Still written by many people over a long period of time. But he says, For I would that all men were even as myself, the Apostle Paul. But every man has his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. Verse 8, I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. Um, and so someone would say, look, if you're, if you're single, I think unmarried here actually means previously married, i.e. divorced, um, because uh, the never married would be, come under the group virgins, where the Bible's already said to avoid fornication, let every man have his own uh, wife, let every woman have her, have her own husband. But in verse 8 or verse 7, you know, he's talking about he wished all men were like himself. But each has his own gift. He happened to have the gift of singleness. He says, I say, therefore, to the unmarried widows, it's good for them if they abide even as I. So it is good. It's good. The Bible says it's good. It's not a mistake. It's good to be single. But then if you go to the following verse, 8, he says, But if they cannot contain, let them marry. Why? For it is better to marry 
them to burn. So no contradiction. This is Paul. He was a human being. God gave him the gift of singleness. He's going to see things through that lens. But because he's speaking by the influence of the Holy Spirit, he's also going to speak truth. And that is why he would prefer that people stay single and avoid the troubles of the flesh. He says if they cannot contain, which means if they cannot contain their you know, sexual desires and would be in the risk, at risk of fornication, let them marry, for it's better to marry than to burn. So here we have what is good and what is better. When people say it's good to be single, as long as they use the right reasons, it is good to be single. It's not bad. It's not wrong. It's not sinful. But Paul says, depending on your makeup, it may be better for you to marry. So again, that's something you've probably told other people yourselves. And, and don't stop believing this, because it's true. It's better to marry than to burn. Then, then that means to be aflame with sexual passion, because that makes you a very distracted individual, makes you somebody that can do some very stupid things that you regret. We've all been there and done that, I think, if we've been single for too long. And uh, it's a great blessing to uh, be able to fulfill that in marriage and not have to be insanely distracted all the time. A distraction will come up uh, as we go through this series too. So at verse 8, when isolated, makes it look like the Bible is saying to all people that are not already married, they are better off staying single. But again, the very next verse says that is not true. In fact, later on in the same chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians 7, verse 32, but I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried cares for the things of uh, that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married cares for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Now, it's also not saying that there's anything wrong with that. It's just saying that's how it is. Verse 34, there is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy in body and in spirit, but she that is married cares for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And there's nothing wrong with that. He says in verse 35, the Apostle Paul, and this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. But if any man thinks that he behaves himself uncomely toward his virgin, this would be his virgin daughter, and if she pass the flower of her age and needs so require, let him do what he will. He sins not. Let them marry. Nevertheless, he that stands steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but has power over his own will, and has so decreed in her heart that he will keep her uh, he will keep his virgin does well. So then he that gives her in marriage does well, but he that gives her not in marriage does better. All this is saying is uh, pretty much the same thing that um, it just depends. Um, if somebody does not need to be married, if they have the gift of singleness, which is, get ready for this, the ability to be single, then, um, then and they can serve God without distraction and, and the sexual thing isn't a you know never-ending battle then um, that person can certainly stay single and should not be fooled or pressured by somebody else to get married so I, I can't make any any blanket statements um, Paul had the gift of singleness so naturally he preferred being single he probably was married at one time before um, God converted him and um, changed the course of his life, gave him the gift of singleness because being married would make it impossible for him to be able to do what he is going to do. Uh, very, very unusual life that he lived. Um, now he says there in verse 39, 1 Corinthians 7, the wife is bound by the law as long as, hus as, long as her husband lives. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will only in the Lord. But she is happier if she so abide after my judgment, he says. And I think also to have the Spirit of God. Well, he does, most certainly. And um, But again, we have to consider, do we have the gift of singleness? Can we live our whole life without sex, without being frustrated? And do that for the kingdom of heaven. 
if we can't say yes to that we don't have the gift of singleness and we yes we should continue to keep looking so I'm gonna have to continue this because I think it's been going 14 15 minutes long and I, I don't want to rush because there's there's no no big hurry to get this done um, just covered a couple things so far you know God is your husband singleness is best maybe you've heard it I've heard it um, I'm married I didn't give up I wasn't discouraged or dissuaded by some of these comments so we'll pick it up in in another video and again um, my name is Bob this is love beyond the sea got a website LVPTS uh, which stands for love beyond the sea dot com uh, check that out all kinds of videos you can see some clips of me and my wife there um, which is a joy to me because I, I could have given up man I know how bad it is for singles today I used to frequent Christian message boards I didn't get help out of that because the people there were so bitter about being single um, it was a big turnoff and I, I mean it's a mess today um, trying to get sound advice and direction from people I'd like to be that person if you would let me but I don't want you to stay single I want you to stay single as long as it takes to get married knowing that God is you know if you give your life to him he is working to accomplish his will in your life you want to be obedient you want to follow him in his ways and his word that's what I did you know take what you can get from this but um, this is just the first of uh, a handful apparently of videos in this series cringeworthy things said to single Christian men and we'll continue the next time on love beyond the sea go where you're wanted